Hello, and welcome back to the RailsQuest channel. Today, I've got a fun one for you. We're gonna keep working on this to-do list application, and we're gonna just make one small tweak that's really not gonna change how it works for the user, but it will demonstrate uh, another Turbo feature that this user has suggested. You can replace a text field, uh, text with the field, right? Editing to-dos without any JavaScript by using Turbo Frames. All right, so thanks for that comment. So here's what that user is referring to in the app. You can click to edit a to-do item, and then you click cancel, and we're back to the unedited version. Right. So I mentioned in the last video that I needed to use some JavaScript to do this, but the user's comment is correct. I don't need to use JavaScript to do that. That's just one of the options. So let's take a quick look at the code. So here's what we've got going on. Let's take a look at that replace. Replace. If I can spell we can get to it. It's very simple. It just has one action, and if it has a replacement target, then it will replace all of its children with the replacement target content. All right, so the replacement target is right here. It is a an HTML template. And so what this does is, let me go back to the app. When I click on this, it fires the commit method on that controller, and that is right, right here. So click replace commit, and that calls this commit method on the stimulus controller. And it very simply just nukes everything inside this span and replaces it with every, everything inside here, which happens to be a form that I've already rendered into this template. So the reason that works is because since we're using um, the more feature of Turbo, when you click cancel, it just navigates to the same page, which by default renders the text this way, all right? And when you save it, it goes to the to-do item controller and redirects back to this page, which find and grab a sturdy umbrella, all right? Redirects back to this page and you can see that it goes back to its normal state. So this is fine. It was just the simplest thing to do at the time. One downside is if you're like trying to select, it can be finicky because if you click on it, it goes into edit mode. And another thing is if I deleted the description here, first of all, I might get an error because I don't remember if there's a validation on that in the controller or in the model. But if I don't, then there's nothing to click on and I can't edit that anymore. So what we're gonna do is instead, so this edit takes you to a whole new page, but we're going to repurpose this edit button to just put you in edit mode, edit mode in place. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to create a new view. Let me get out of the way here. S view to do items, I'm going to call this. So we already have a to do item here, to do item. And uh, whoops, I'm gonna call this a mini to do item. Okay, so now we have our mini to do item. And I'm just going to stick this whole thing. Let's see how much we need. Everything inside the li tag. Mostly because I don't want to dictate that it's an unordered list. This is my application, so I can do whatever I want. So, <laughs> But we'll just say um, that this is it for now. And if we run into trouble with that, beautiful. Okay, this... Looks like it will work. We've got item passed in. We've got the block passed in. I don't know if we need that. We need it for the to-do item path. Okay. So we save both of them. We go in here. We render the page. All right. We still got all of our interactions. So that's one thing that I do like about the controller, uh, the stimulus controller technique, is it's pretty easy to move around. So we just refactored that. Let's go ahead and commit these changes here, refactor, <laughs> yes, we'll, we'll just call it that. All right, so now we've got that committed. I'm going to uh, stop showing that controller. So we're going to focus on this view for now. So what's a way that we can use Turbo Forms to do this interaction instead of uh, what we were doing before? 
tur uh, what did I say? Turbo form, turbo frame, turbo frame. Okay. So let's go down to the bottom. Put in, yes, our end tag, end ERB. And uh, now we actually have our turbo frame in place. So this is already there. Uh, and it messed up the rendering of that whole thing. So we need to take charge of that again. Oop, wrong place to put a comma. We're going to say class flex and flex. Let's just see what flex does. Uh, what's the context here? We're inside a flex. Oh, the item center. Just to make that render correctly. Honestly, Tailwind classes, um, okay, that's getting better. We're all in a row. These, these AIs, I'm trying out an AI co-pilot that gives you suggestions, and it kind of goes crazy with the classes. Um, so what we want to do, what's our problem? We've got edit and delete all smushed up against our description. So where is edit and delete? Let's give this a flex grow. Actually, scratch that. I want to put the flex grow on here. Flex grow. Now let's see if that does what we want it to do. It does not. So let's take a look at flex, flex items, uh, items center. This span is inside the turbo frame tag that we've put those styles on. What's in here? We've got a form. This is the checkbox. So we want that there. Then we want this to take up all of our space. But this is preventing it from doing so. Let's look at this and see if we've uh, messed something up here. Aha! Our tur turbo frame is not... There we go. So if we leave the flex grow on here, yes, that does what I expect it to do. So let's leave the flex grow on there. There we go. And we refresh, and we have exactly the same deal. OK, so our next step is going to be coming up with a strategy to select uh, this using ERB instead of JavaScript. All right? So let's just do something. Let's set a variable. We're going to call it is editing or equals false. Okay. And inside here, we want to say if is editing false end, All right? If not editing, we want to show the regular description. If we are editing, we want to stick this form into the view. So how are we going to, first let's just make sure we didn't break anything. Uh, all we should have broken is, yes, the replacement controller is no longer functioning. Okay, now we need to figure out how to actually communicate to the controller that we want to edit. So this is another, well, we can put them all in edit mode and we'll see what that does. Cool. We want, what we need to do is single out a single field for editing. So let's make another variable, param key or equals to do item editing param key equals editing to do item. params equals 
we don't need DOM ID, we just want, um, actually that's not a bad idea. But I will generalize later. Right now we want dot ID dot two S and not that. So with that change, I don't actually need any of this. So now we need to make the edit link editing param key item dot id item oh, i see that's left over okay so now when we click edit it should add that query string within the turbo frame and we will see the edit button we can still click cancel and get out of there we can still click save and get it saved but it all happens within the turbo frame so let's that's that's the behavior that we want let's just do a couple minor modifications here let's make the class and we'll put we can put this cancel outside the form easily and we can Move, we can make this flex grow. Yes, Oops, not that. Yes. Okay, so we only want to show cancel if is editing link to cancel. Else link to edit. Okay, so now we have save, cancel, delete, and we have a bigger text field, so we actually got a UX win out of this whole thing. So you'll notice we don't get that notification anymore. I don't care too much about that because you do get feedback, but let's go ahead and fix that. Cancel is fine. It's the save button. So we need to add a data... I don't remember this off the top of my head, but I'm going to take a chance. There we go. Okay, yeah. The AI was correct. Underscore top. So what I did was turbo frame, uh, data turbo frame attribute, assign it to top. That, that makes it refresh the whole page instead of just the turbo frame itself. So, and I suspect there is still another issue lurking here. So one neat thing about this is it preserved the ability to edit as many of these as you like. I have a feeling that if we add a bogus item and we delete, we're going to get a problem. Yeah, content missing. So let's go ahead and fix that with the same technique. I'm always getting in the way. So this is going to be data, turbo frame top. Okay, let's add our bogus item again delete beautiful so now we've got all the functionality we did have plus a little bit of extra um, pizzazz on there just a little bit of like making this bigger and changing the layout i need to fix that but i will fix that another time um, but yeah that is now we have moved this into a turbo frame and we've also done a little bit of tidying up in this view because it was getting a little little hairy in there anyway. This isn't the only way to do it. This is just an incremental step. The way that some some people who might really buy into the resourceful pattern might have this on an, on its own route. So you would have a different controller that this would actually be rendered from. Uh, as long as the turbo frame IDs match right here, it doesn't really matter where the HTML is coming from. It's going to grab that bit of HTML and stick it in this turbo frame. I kind of like this approach, at least for now. I've used it. I've used both approaches, and I think this is this is portable. I could stick this same partial under just about any controller. And as long the the tricky thing is, as long as the params don't collide with something that the controller is already doing, that's going to be your issue. Um, but I've made that assignable so you can actually get around that issue 
uh, there's a workaround, right? It's pretty easy. This is nothing special, just a regular partial, and you can render it just about anywhere in your app and get this functionality. So keep on commenting, uh, keep on letting me know your feedback, what you'd like to see. I love playing with Turbo and, and getting to know and establish the, the patterns because it's still, it's still all a little bit new. Uh, it's, people are still figuring this stuff out and uh, I'm included in that as well. And so uh, figuring out the best way to mix turbo frames with turbo streams, the balance between JavaScript and using uh, a frame. I'll probably leave this the way it is. It's just fine the way that it is. And I was okay with it uh, using a stimulus controller also. Both ways are totally fine to me and have their own little trade-offs to offer. But with that, like I said, keep on liking the videos, keep on subscribing, please comment. If you do have a thought, if you see something that you'd like to help me out with that I'm struggling with, feel free to drop a comment. I, I'd love to see that. And I'll see you again next time. Have a blessed day.